resonance, all pointers converge on a central theme. This is the simple truth of what we are, the essential and inescapable reality that shines behind the doubtless sense of being present and aware. No one can say I am not, as the very statement presupposes the existence of the one attempting to deny his or her own existence. This is why one's existence is the touchstone or gold standard by which all other truths are evaluated. All pointers encourage us to probe the fundamental fact of our self-existent being, which not only is but knows. This is the heart of the matter, the constant and final theme of all of the great traditions that have come down to us under the banner of non-duality. Non-duality speaks to the non-separation of the seeker and the final reality being sought. As all of the traditions tell us, each in its own way, you are that. In our own times, the direct communication of this basic truth was famously shared by the well-known sage of Mumbai, Bombay, Nisargadatta Maharaj. Was fortunate enough to meet one of Nisargadatta Maharaj's direct students, Sailor Bob Adamson, in Melbourne, Australia, a few years ago. He shared with me the essential pointers he had received from Nisargadatta Maharaj. More importantly, he was able to point to the reality of my being so directly that it could no longer be avoided or overlooked. As he once mentioned to me, it is not the words themselves that are important, but the living reality behind the words that makes the difference. This reality, when recognized by one who knows, informs whatever words may be used as pointers. This causes a resonance in the inner being of the receptive listener such that the true nature of the listener is recognized in all its immediacy and livingness. This is the pure light of non-conceptual awareness beyond thought. It is not that reality is difficult to perceive. In truth, it is so simple that we overlook the obvious. For, how many thoughts, feelings or experiences can you have without being present and aware to have them? Still, a direct pointer to this by one who knows is extremely helpful, as many can attest. The recognition of the inescapable and ever-present nature of the listener's real self lays bare the false basis of the belief that one is a separate, limited, isolated person apart from reality. As this is the basis of all of the concepts and identifications that generate limitation in life, this revelation effectively cancels needless psychological suffering. Such suffering is only sustained through a false belief in being something we are not. Not only is reality found to be shining within oneself as one's very self, but the seeking, suffering and doubt that may have been carried for a lifetime is overcome at a stroke. In seeing and experiencing these basic truths for oneself, there may naturally arise a desire to share the good news with others who would resonate with the pointers themselves. There is no fixed set of pointers or manner of speaking of these fundamental truths. While the essential points, being timeless, remain consistent from year to year and age to age, the manner in which they are framed and communicated must necessarily vary, based on the needs of the times. Furthermore, the questions and issues raised by those engaged in the verification of the truths in their own experience are bound to change. This is why it is useful to have fresh expressions and pointers set in contemporary words and speech. This allows us to focus on the essence and frees us from having to digest archaic terms and outdated cultural trappings. Section 2, Beyond Words, Shining in Your Heart. If we are looking for answers at a conceptual level, the pointers are just words. Clearly, words have no real life or substance, being dead images. Listening to words is about as fulfilling as trying to drink water from the painting of a lake. At some point, an interest may arise to drop all the concepts, pointers and words, in fact, to stop looking in the mind entirely. In that pause, let the looking turn directly to that clear, doubtless existence shining in your heart. If you are hearing pointers but not looking at what is being pointed to, this will seem like so much empty prattling, for that is all it can ever be at a verbal level. But take the cue and look directly into your own heart. See, know and be what you are. Drop the concepts and come face to face with your real self, your undeniable being. All the pointers such as love, oneness, awareness, life, aliveness, unconditioned, free of suffering, etc., are only trying to give a sense of the nature of what you are. If they are left as words, they are just empty husks. But is what is shining in your heart a lifeless dead image? If not, what is it? This is what needs to be seen, non-conceptually, in direct experience. Nothing is gained or attained, because what you are has been here all along. Section 3, Words are only pointers. It is a bit tricky quoting the words of great teachers for confirmation of anything, because the words are only pointers and concepts arising in particular situations. In other words, in the moment the words were delivered they were spontaneous pointers of encouragement for someone in that moment to drop a particular concept or perspective in order to notice what is here prior to concepts. Later, when we read the words, it is actually a case of moving back into concepts and away from what is clear and present. Seeing this may free up a lot of space. 
That is why reading about non-duality is a bit misleading and often complicates the simplicity of it. For every passage one quotes, you can find dozens more asserting the opposite view. It is helpful to see why this must be so. There is not a fixed teaching at all. There is a stream of spontaneous points arising to expose whatever dualistic notions the seeker may have been holding as true. It is more a matter of love and expression rather than some spiritual verbiage. People think you get to the heart of this by studying philosophy, learning Sanskrit, or delving into the recorded words of sages. This is entirely erroneous and completely misses the mark. It only fattens the stock of concepts and keeps the attention locked in the mind. It is overlooking your ever-present natural state. Pause the concepts, whatever they may be, and notice what is present, what you actually are here and now. That is already evident and available in all its immediacy. I cannot stress this strongly enough. That we thought they were was only an ignorant mistake. So return to the basics and have a look for yourself. Instead of talking about concepts, chuck them all overboard and talk from what is actually present in your experience. Non-duality books, quotes, spiritual jargon and hypothetical what-ifs are entirely incapable of revealing the direct recognition of immediate freedom and happiness. That is present as the pure light of simple knowing and being shining in the core of your mind or the center of your heart. In that light, the universe and all bodies and minds arise and pass like specks of dust in the warmth of a vast, cloudless sky, which is the sky of your being. That non-conceptual awareness or presence of life beyond the mind pours out through your senses and bathes each thought, feeling and experience in a timeless and inescapable clear cognizance. Call it what you will, being, awareness, love, presence, what is, knowing, light, life, intelligence, spirit, etc. whatever it is, it is undeniable and inescapable. It is being that cannot be doubted or contradicted, an unborn, undying awareness without ceasing, life with no boundary, a peace and causeless joy that embraces all appearances, all possibilities, all opposites. Nothing can be outside of that, nothing stands apart from that, there is nothing other than that. And you are that. Section 4. Awareness and Objects The resolution of the apparent duality of awareness and objects lies in seeing that the supposed difference is not really present. In other words, there is an assumption that there is awareness in objects. Then the mind gets tangled up in how they are supposed to be stitched together. This is like the person who asks, how do I awaken? And then gets wrapped up in that concept. He or she overlooks that awareness is already awake, and that the supposed identity is not really present, except as an assumption. In the clear seeing of this, the dilemma collapses. The issue is similar with awareness in objects. No object or experience can ever stand outside of, or apart from, the awareness of it. This resolves the issue directly. The objects and awareness are not separate, even now. So why talk of how to put them together, or how to see them as one? Are they separate to start with? No. Therefore, the concept and the problem drop. Most people naturally assume there are only objects and have no real sense of awareness itself. So the pointer is brought up to distinguish objects and awareness only for the purpose of highlighting the presence of awareness, not to create an absolute split between them but because there isn't one. Once awareness and your identity as that is clear, you can look back at the apparent objects and see that they have no real substance or independent nature apart from the awareness of them. This is somewhat like the figures on a carved marble relief not being separate from the marble itself. The false dilemma is apparent in the question, how are the carved figures and the marble to be seen as one? The real question is, have you ever seen them as separate from each other? The bottom line is that there can be no experience outside of awareness. So, to speak of awareness and objects as if they were independent it is not possible based on direct experience. It is very important to mention a subtle point that many miss at this juncture. The objects are not in themselves the same as awareness, or the abiding reality. Objects are appearances, but your real being remains independent of the presence or absence of the objects. In practical experience, you can see that objects are constantly changing, but your own being remains without break. A wave is nothing but water, but water as such is not a wave as such. Therefore, it is not a one-to-one -one equivalence. That is why when people say all appearances are the oneness, it is not a precisely clear and accurate statement. 